What's up guys, Vinith here and I'm back with another camera review. In this episode, we're going to put the camera of Honor 7X to the test. I have been using Honor 7X for a little more than a week now and I have been using its camera extensively for day-to-day -day pictures. I have made a couple of videos on this phone already, so if you have not seen those, I'll leave a card and a link in the description. Now 7X is a predecessor of 6X, which has been the early bird in the dual camera thing and they did it even before it was cool. So let's see how Honor 7X stands to its expectations. Now before jumping into the video, if you end up liking the content, then don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to my channel for more quality tech content. So without any further ado, let's roll the intro. Let's get the camera specs out of the way first. The fancy dual camera setup on Honor 7X consists of 16 megapixel primary sensor and a 2 megapixel depth and extra light sensor. Surprisingly, company has not revealed important information about the sensors like aperture and pixel size. The main camera has a face detection autofocus. Both these sensors lack electronic and optical image stabilization. And alongside the dual cameras, you get a single LED flash. You can shoot videos up to 1080p at 30 frames per second. Now it is kind of a bummer because even though the similar level CPUs are capable of shooting 4K videos, Honor should have included at least, at least 1080p at 60 frames per second. The camera bumps are relatively smaller as compared to the recent phones that I have reviewed and even the housing for both the lenses are different and not combined. The selfie camera is a 8 megapixel sensor and does provide a screen flash. This camera also has a portrait mode which blurs the background keeping the person in focus. Now let's move on to the native camera app. It provides heaps of options and some pro level configuration that helps you click some amazing photos by tweaking the camera attributes. In photo mode you get an option to click a portrait photo which works only with humans. In this mode you can enable or disable the bokeh. You can play with the level of beautify settings and much more. For other objects there is a wide aperture mode where you can set the amount of aperture applied which also results into blurred background. With highest blur setting, the object or the person appears like a cutout rather than looking like an actual photo. You can also click a moving photo just like an iPhone where a small video snippet is captured alongside the photo. When you are viewing the photo, you can long press on it to play the video clip. The best part of this camera app is the pro mode is available for photo as well as video where you can play with things like ISO, shutter speed, exposure, focus, white balance, etc. There are plenty of other modes in photo that allows you to click specifics of photos like night mode where the iOS and shutter speed can be configured. There's an option called good food wherein you can click food photos keeping the saturation on the higher side for that punchy look. Panorama, HDR, slow-mo and time-lapse like standard modes are also present. You can apply filters while you click the photo in the filter mode. You can click those beautiful light rails using the light painting mode. In effects mode, you can click photos with Snapchat-like filters. By the variety of options the native camera app supports, I'm simply blown away and trust me, not many high-end flagship also don't provide such variety of options. Let's now move to the actual camera samples. Do note that I have clicked all these photos with auto mode. In case I have applied any mode while clicking the photo or shooting a video, I'll mention that in the left top corner. Photos in good lighting conditions appear good. The sharpness is quite amazing but the photos look bit oversaturated. But overall I am quite impressed with the camera's wide balance and exposure adjustment to various lighting conditions. Even though the photo quality is fairly decent, I wish the dynamic color range could have been better but cannot complain considering the price point at which the phone has been offered. The depth enabled photos are quite impressive too. Like the predecessor 6X, it does its job pretty well. I would say that it's far better than Moto X4 that costs 7 to 8 thousand rupees more. On most of the occasions, the depth sensors captures the exact difference between the foreground and the background subject. While clicking the portrait photo, you might not get that feeling but the final results are quite impressive. These are some sample photos clicked with the special modes provided.
I'm really impressed with the amount of options the native camera has and this allows you to do more with what you have rather than just clicking a photo and then editing it post production. I never felt like downloading any other editing software because of such a variety of options. Coming to its artificial and low light performance, the camera does produce some noise. But if you use the pro mode, then you can adjust the ISO and control the noise and that can save your picture. In extreme low light conditions, the camera cannot capture more details as it does for good lighting conditions. Moving to the selfie camera, the 8 megapixel shooter captures some decent selfies. You can set the beauty file level in the native camera app and can also turn the portrait mode on and off. The bokeh effect through the front facing camera is brought to you by the software since there is no second sensor available like it is for Honor 9i. In low light conditions, you can make the use of screen flash to brighten your selfies. Coming to the video side, the rear camera does a decent job but certainly fails to capture the fast moving objects. This is because of those less frames per second support. He surely missed the stabilization as well because it results into that shaky or distorted video. Here is the camera test for Honor 7X. The audio is being recorded through internal microphone and as you can see it's quite uh, different lighting condition that you can see and in, with good lighting condition it is doing really well I did not expect it to do it this good but this is really nice front of camera also supports 1080p videos test for the Honor 7X the front facing camera it's quite dark I'm using the light in my uh, society's uh, parking and I would say it is doing really well so this will give you a real life scenario how exactly the Honor 7X will behave with little bit amount of lighting that you have with you. <clears throat> I'm quite impressed with that. I'm just quite impressed with it. Look at the light. To conclude, the camera of Honor 7X captures some good photos and videos in good lighting conditions. In low lighting conditions, the pro mode can save you on many occasions. You just need to learn how to play with those attributes and you are sorted. But what has amazed me is its camera options and what you can do with it. So in my opinion, it is really a good bang for your money and you're not losing too much quality as compared to the cameras of high-end phones out there. That's pretty much it for this video guys. Let me know what you guys think about this phone's camera. If you have any queries, shoot them in the comment section below. I'll be comparing the camera on Honor 7X with the ones present on Moto X4 and OnePlus 5T. So make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Drop a like if you like this video and feel free to share it with your friends. This is Vinny signing off and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace!